welcome to my video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, my name is Edo. Please call me Edoko the Fool. The point of this video is to just to show you what I did throughout my career and where I plan to go forward from here. But thank you so much for joining me. I'm feeling very blessed that I'm able to do this. So stick around, get a drink and make yourself comfortable. Let's get into it. Today I would like to share with you one of my most precious memories of working in Celine in China. It has been almost a year since I've been out of the fashion industry. This is a simple story about a boy who wanted to work in fashion since he was 16. So you'll see in my yearbook photo um, that I really wanted to work in fashion. So we are going back in time to the year of 2014. So let's go. The story begins in the autumn of 2014 where I wanted to move to Shanghai, China because I was curious to see what the luxury fashion retail sector looks like in China. I was born in Taipei and I moved to Australia when I was six so I had never been to China before. I arrived in China with a mindset of determination and curiosity and because I didn't know anyone, I sent in my CV to Michael Page, which is an international recruitment agency. So they helped me look for different job opportunities. I gave them my CV and they organized a lot of different interviews for me at various luxury brands. And I would always get rejected in the last round because of my lack of work experience in China. In my fifth month of looking for jobs in China, I was quite desperate and in despair because I was getting rejected all the time. I was running out of money to stay in China and I was ready to give up. I had given up a really comfortable career in Australia because I was faced with so many challenges in China. I was really, I was really upset. You know, things just didn't work out as I planned. I got a phone call from my recruiter at Michael Page and they told me that a job opportunity was opening up for the position of boutique manager in Celine under the LVMH Fashion Group. I said yes straight away and they arranged the interview for me for the position of boutique manager in Plaza 66. I went through five rounds of the interview process, starting with the head of HR and then area manager, retail director, company director. And surprisingly, my last round was actually with the head of training, Shirley, who also played a very, very important and pivotal role throughout my journey in Celine. I waited three weeks after my final round with Shirley for a reply from Celine and I heard nothing. So I was getting quite desperate. I'm like, oh, not again. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to send my prayers up into the heavens. So I went to a temple called Jing'an Temple in the heart of Shanghai CBD to pray. And the next day, with heavily coincidence, I got the job. I had no idea at the time uh, where this journey would take me, but I knew deep down in my heart I had to give it my best shot. So the day before my onboard at Celine, I was called into the office to meet with the global retail director, Diego, for a quick chit chat. I had asked him, where he wanted me to take the sales revenue up to and he said ideally he wants me to bring it up to the one million australian dollars mark per month which sounded very big to me at the time then i asked him what is the average per month in sales currently at this boutique and he told me they were roughly doing two hundred thousand australian dollars per month in terms of sales revenue so in a graph it would look like this Now take a guess, what was the sales revenue on by the time I had officially transitioned into my styling manager role? What I didn't foresee was that after four months in Celine, I was ready to resign. To be honest, I don't feel like where I was at back then, I don't think I was mentally prepared for this 
giant corporate machine that is LVMH. And secondly, I still couldn't keep up with that fast paced, goal focused environment, which was China, because I'm a very process focused person. So one month after my 33rd birthday in 2015, I handed in my resignation. So another boutique manager in Shanghai, Masha, he heard about my plans to resign and without telling me, he actually went up to the head of HR and told her about the styling and service training that I was doing in my boutique. And he said that it would be a shame for me to leave Celine. And he was talking to her about maybe the company could consider creating some sort of styling focused job title for me. The head of HR, Chloe and Masha were kind enough to take me out for dinner one night and they sat me down and proposed that they were thinking of pitching this idea of a styling managerial role to the company director, Mitchell. I didn't think too much about it at that time because I just, maybe I didn't have enough faith in such a big corporate structure. You know, I didn't think they were innovative enough to open up a completely new and abstract job role for me. So Mitchell, the company director, after a few days, he came up to me and wanted to discuss this idea of proposing this particular styling manager project to the global retail director in Paris. And to be completely honest, at that time, I thought maybe they were trying to stall me from my resignation because already after a few months in Plaza 66, they could see some positive changes in terms of store morale, team morale, some sales figures, they were slightly shifting towards the better end. I was like, are they trying to hold me back? What's going on? So by the end of this notice period I'd given Celine, I was pretty much going to be without a job. And without a job, I definitely could not stay in China because I didn't have a visa. On my last day at Celine, my unofficial mentor, the head of training, Shirley, came down to the boutique to say goodbye to me. I remember standing in the boutique and I had clocked out of my shift. And she visited me in the stockroom to bid her farewells. She asked if I had thought this through carefully and she said kind of almost to herself she would do anything like she would give up her title of head of training just for this opportunity to become a styling manager for Celine. that remark really shook my core because to me i was like my mentor shirley someone who i respected and admired so much because of her talents and her work ethics she was willing to give up that head of training position in exchange for the styling manager role they were proposing to Paris. So for me, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it shook my core. So it was like a flash of inspiration. Like I felt like I could see what I was too blind to see before. Pretty much this particular role, it never existed globally in LVMH Fashion Guru. It was an opportunity for me to carve out my own path in my own career and be able to set up standards and also empower me to do a lot of things that I never thought I could do in a traditional retail role. Like that impulsive thought just grabbed hold of me. And then I was like, you know what, thank you so much. I hugged Shirley and I was like, thank you. I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna talk to Mitchell. I rushed upstairs to Mitchell's office. He packed up and he was ready to go home. And um, I came into the office and he was like, you know, are you here to say goodbye to me? And I was like, actually, I have something to tell you. So I asked him, how serious are you about proposing this to Paris? And, you know, like, I can't live on empty promises because in my entire career, I've been let down by so many egotistical men who had overpromised and really underdelivered. And I was like, I, I just can't live through that again. He said he couldn't promise me anything, but he said, he will do all in his power to nurture me, even without the approval of Paris. He would nurture me into this styling role. And I think that's something that just made me really, really respect and Mitchell as a CEO. Mitchell knew how to navigate through the intricacies of a corporate environment 
while at the same time prioritizing my values and my needs. So my retail director, Elaine, and also Mitchell gave me very specific guidelines as to how I can navigate through this. So they said I could definitely start off leading uh, styling events during the trunk shows and also start in key stores around China, um, such as Shanghai, obviously, Beijing, Chengdu, Shenzhen, um, Guangzhou. I could start implementing some training sessions into the store. So in regards to styling or like client service, client profiling. What had looked like a very heavy workload because my priority was I had to be responsible for the boutique and on the side, I had to work on this mini styling program around China. It looks like to outsiders a lot of workload, but to be honest, it was literally a very exciting beginning of my journey into Celine. 14 months into my time with Celine, I had delivered the 1 million per month target to the global director, Diego, whom I had met before I came on board into Celine. And he was very gracious enough to invite me to join the opening of a huge store in Ginza in Tokyo, Japan, where I had the opportunity to meet amazing peers and I was very lucky to become friends with them even outside of work. So I hear you ask, how long did it take for Celine to finally appoint me as the styling manager for Celine China? Take a guess and I'll be right back because I have to be. Hang on a sec. I'm back. Now where were we? Okay, so did you have a guess? It took Celine two years and three months to finally approve me of my appointment as a styling manager. And was it worth the wait? I think you know by now it's definitely worth the wait from all the photos you've seen. She knows everything about everyone. That's why her hair is so big. It's secret. Hey, hey, um, what's happening? It does sound like a very long time though, like two years and three months. But to me, it happened in a blink of an eye because... One day you're in, and the next day you're out. So realistically speaking, obviously I needed credit to prove my worth. Remember that graph I showed you at the beginning of the video? Oops, sorry, wrong one. Um, this one. When I moved to work in the head office, the boutique was generating roughly around 1.5 million Australian dollars a month. I led the ready-to-wear business of the store into global top 10. The reason behind that was I love clothing and ready-to-wear is how we call that clothing category in this industry. When I arrived in China, I was like, I mean, I just couldn't understand. Celine is such a beautiful brand, but how come it's not selling in China? And when I finally realized it's not about the market it's like my team did not know how to sell these clothes so obviously i coached my team and i showed them i was selling on the floor with them and i showed them how to talk to clients how to engage with them how to look after them how to make them feel comfortable and by that process i started growing the ready to wear business and finally i was like yes it's in the global top 10 the only flagship boutique of celine in china needs to be in the global top 10 like where else could it be so i grew that into the global top 10 business and then i was always so focused focused on customer service and in the mystery shopping program I was ranked in China as the number one store for client experience and then secondly my store was ranked globally in the number two position for mystery shopper so these are two key things that I'm very proud of and proud of my team. If you liked what you've seen and what you've heard, and if you feel like this story so far gave you a different perspective to the fashion industry, please don't forget to support me. Please click the subscribe button. I would love to share with you in the future on more tips in regards to client telling, client profiling, service, and also some soft skills, which helped me a lot during my time in Celine.
So on a very ordinary day in 2017, Paris finally announced through a global email of my appointment as the styling manager for Celine China. In that moment, when I saw that email, I felt like all the stars had aligned and everything that I've learned from my first job at Dior all the way up to Celine, I felt like it had finally paid off. The three key roles they asked me to play as a styling manager for Celine, I was responsible for client profiling during the buying trips in Paris. I was also responsible for styling and service and client profiling training across China. And thirdly, I was in charge of all the styling events for all the in-store and national trunk shows we did around China. Also, I was so lucky to be invited to do my styling program training for the Eurozone in Paris and also for the APAC zone in Hong Kong and Macau. I got to meet a lot of wonderful people and for that, I'm also very thankful. What you've just witnessed is a very important external part of my experience as a Celine person. And now I'd like to share with you one of the most important experiences on an internal level as an employee of Celine. Vada McComb was created as an internal guideline for all the retail and office staff at Celine on a global level. And it outlines the values we should upheld at Celine. The global CEO for Celine was going to do a live stream on Vada McComb. At that time, I was actually at Harbour City in Hong Kong doing a styling training session. And I would finished that day doing my training and talking with a few staff, understanding what they need and how I can help them further their career. After midnight, after watching that live stream, it resonated with me so much. I knew I finally found my place in fashion. I knew that I belonged here. The values which resonated with me in this Vatimakum were sincerity, agility, and focus. So why did it resonate with me? It's because never before had I been in a company where they placed their number one priorities with their staff. It was about how to motivate your staff further. It was about how to treat your clients and your internal staff with respect, sincerity, and how can we be focused on everything that we do. Like I told you before, I'm a very process-driven person. So I'm always very focused in the nowness of everything that I do. It created so much motivation for me despite challenging times. And I think you'll understand where this is going later on in the video as well. Despite challenging times, I remained focused and I remained sincere to my staff. And I knew I had to react quickly, I had to learn quickly, hence the agility. I don't know if it's just a personal bias, but if I look back at those times, I felt like everything we did were very well communicated. A lot of the things and the decisions that we did were very aligned and it was very consistent. And working with a group of focused and sincere people, you know, a company doesn't get better than this. So finally at Celine, it, this job didn't feel like a job anymore because my superiors and the directors who supported me, they empowered me to go further in this path that I had chosen they had created for me. So for that, I'm always very thankful. So if you're interested further into how I translated these three quite abstract concepts into actual everyday office and retail practices, please leave a comment down below because I would love to share with you some tips. You know, I would love for you to inspire me to create other contents revolving around these topics. So as the saying goes, all good things come to an end, which takes us to the final part of this journey. Celine and Celine. I felt dead. I mean, <laughs> dead is a very strong word, 
But that's exactly what I felt inside when I heard that Marco and Phoebe are leaving Celine. The final nail in the coffin was when the Phoebe Philo's era's logo of Celine changed into the new era of Celine. So the logo had changed and it symbolized something bigger than just a simple logo change. And it symbolized a new era is coming. And I was very uncertain about it. I was on a buying trip during the first collection of the new creative artistic and image director. He's very fancy. He's got three titles. I was in the showroom and I remember we were going through the new shoes collection and I was visibly upset because of my personal reasons. And Mitchell saw how upset I was. So he decided to give me a day off. He's like, you know, Edward Chill, you need to leave the showroom. Just go out, enjoy your day. Don't think about it too much. Refresh yourself. And then maybe try to see it with a less biased perspective tomorrow. When I was outside of the showroom, I looked up to the sky. You know, it was a clear blue day. The sun was shining and there was this crisp wintry air against my skin in Paris. And I had a very quick realization that none of my personal preferences actually mattered in this corporate business. You know, like me loving the collection is one thing, but I need to be professional enough to let go of my biases and sell these products because I, at the end of the day, I'm working for a company and the goal is to profit. You know, as the saying goes, the show must go on. That was the moment I knew it was time for me to go. After that demotivating buying trip in Paris, we arrived back in Shanghai and soon after, LVMH Fashion Group announced their annual party theme, unironically, but to me it was very ironic because the theme was actually the show must go on. So being the extra goblin that I am, I decided that theme because it meant nothing to me and there was no salvaging it. It was like the Titanic um, and it was sinking. But I was like, you know what? That I'm going to go as my own theme. So my theme was Edoko's funeral of the death of his career, if that makes sense. And also it was Edoko's Met Ball Gala because I wanted to be extra and fancy. Um, but until this day, no one knew why I dressed up the way I did to that annual gala. To be honest, I was mourning the death of my career because I knew my time at Celine was coming to an end. So yeah. Now you're the first to know the real reason why I dressed up the way I did. And what you also don't see in the photos was that I had hidden another phone of mine in my fake cleavage of my dress. And then I played on loudspeaker Lana Del Rey's uh, Born to Die because it was a very somber kind of vibe. So I was walking around the entire night at this annual gala with They don't tell me now Take me to the fair Line. And they were like, where's that sound coming from? But it was coming from my fake bosom. So despite all this turbulence that was coming like at me externally, because it was a huge wave of change and also my internal turmoils that I was going through, I knew I had to stay focused. And I knew that this would be a testament of my professionalism. I said to myself, if I can make it out at least a year, um, despite the huge changes coming in the new era of Celine, I was like, I want to see how far I can go at staying as a true professional in this field. So I decided to stay regardless of my personal impulses. The decision to do so was at least I would know. I gave it my best shot. And then uh, the bad news kept coming. It was announced that Mitchell, my company director, who also helped me in this journey, it was his time to go. However, he left a little surprise before he left. This surprise is definitely the highlight of my entire career. So Mitchell was proposing to Paris about centralizing my training program on a global scale. Because of that, the retail director for the Eurozone flew out to Shanghai to see how I was going to do the new season collection training. So she flew to Shanghai, she sat down with us for a day and she watched how I interacted, engaged and coached all the staff who attended my training. She was very happy with my work and um, she flew back to Paris. And shortly after she flew back to Paris, Kevin found me again and he told me that that Paris was interested in inviting him and I to go to Paris and deliver a very important presentation on the Chinese market and also on my styling program. I mean, it was the biggest opportunity for me. I had never delivered any sort of presentations in front of the board of directors, let alone the CEO 
CEO. And it was actually his first time because he just came on board. So for both of us, it was our first time to do a presentation to the board of directors and the CEO in Paris. On a quick note, I just really want to thank Kevin. I don't even think you will see this video, but thank you so much, Kevin, for empowering me and really trusting my work and always 100% behind my back. I always think of you very fondly. And secondly, to Delphine, who I also don't think will watch this video, but thank you so much, Delphine. You were my first friend I made from the Paris headquarters. It was a pleasure to work with you in China and thank you always for supporting myself, my team, and also my styling work. I thank you for your vision. Thank you so much. In the summer of 2019, I went back to Paris with Kevin. I finally did the presentation with Kevin to the CEO and board of directors. And to be honest, the CEO, she looked bored. Maybe it's my fault, maybe it's hers, but who knows, it's all perspective. Regardless, I had a blast. I was so nervous. I remember sweating so much. I was soaked. I was so nervous. I've never been... Never ending. It's a never-ending story. <laughs> I was so nervous. This is the biggest thing I've ever done in my career. Apparently, they couldn't even tell that I was nervous. I'm actually quite nervous doing this video, actually. Um, but yeah, they couldn't tell I was nervous. And then they came up to me after the presentation. And they gave me such helpful insight, which really ingrained into me after that presentation. And I think those insights I could always use in this field. So I'm so thankful of that. Thank you. So after I finished the presentation on the other side at the showroom, all the merchandisers had finished their final buy and they decided to have kind of like an after party at Palais de Tokyo in Paris. And um, who knew it was actually the last time I would ever spend with the global merchandising team of Celine. So pretty much up until this point, I was getting to the end of my Paris trip and I had finished my two day onboard induction training with the new colleagues at uh, the Paris HQ. The retail director, she came up to me at the end of the two days of onboard training and she told me that Paris cannot go ahead with the centralization of my training program because there were budget issues and frozen headcount at the headquarters. And to be honest, right then and there, I was super disappointed. So I was very sad. Looking back, it was a blessing in disguise because if it had happened, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you guys. We all went into lockdown, so we started working from home. And when we were working from home, like I said before, the show must go on, right? We had to work out on our calendar how we should plan the next big collection training. So I said, okay, let's just do a live stream and focusing on styling, localizing the styling for Chinese clients. How do we reinterpret that French bourgeoisie vibe into a more local aesthetic or preference? So no one knew that I was going to be resigning because I decided that this live training would be the last training I will ever do for Celine. And one of the most important reasons as to why I was holding off this recognition was because I was waiting for my big, fat, juicy bonus. Thank you, Celine. Thank you for your sponsorship. You have created a YouTube goblin monster. Wait, 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 wait. And it dawned on me that when I was in front of that camera, I actually just saw the collection for what it was. Rather than seeing it with a biased perspective, I could see it for what it was. And I felt like in that moment, I was styling just a piece of clothing rather than a piece of clothing designed by whoever. I saw it for what it was and that honesty and sincerity, I think, translated through to my audience. I was in the zone. I was talking about the texture, the fabric, the composition, how it felt against the skin, how it felt you know, wearing a particular silhouette, what it might represent for the client. There was a lot of this going on in front of the camera and I was like, this, I feel so free. I think that's the word I can use. I felt so free. 
in front of that camera, just talking to everyone. And it was at that moment I realized ultimately in life or in my career, I wanted a platform which didn't have a corporate filter on it. And I wanted a platform where egos don't matter and I didn't have to compromise my own values just to chase figures, if that makes sense to you. So I thought after we had wrapped up the live stream, I'm gonna get on YouTube and because as you might know already, I love gaming. So I wanna stream on Twitch as well. And this is the reason why I left Celine and China. This is my resignation letter to Celine. It happened the day after I got my big, fat, juicy bonus. Thank you for all your support. It's my last day with Celine and I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this very, very long video. This video means a lot to me because there is a lot of emotions attached to it. So thank you so much, Shirley. You made who I am today. It's more than I can ask for and I just feel so blessed that I could have such an amazing experience. Thank you, everyone. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And also moving forward with this channel, I really want to bring about a message of joy and hope. I hope you would like to visit me again on my channel. Thank you so much. I wish you a lovely day. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.